Peacemakers Inner Healing, a nonprofit organization I founded a few years ago to help people suffering from depression, anxiety, PTSD, and any type of toxic emotion or addiction stemming from any type of abuse, including physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, and sadly, even religious abuse. My videos are made to help set the captives free. According to the Word of God in Isaiah 61.1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Captivity and bondage can come in many forms. Please understand that ministering to idols in our hearts is just one subject matter that we deal with here at our Healing and Deliverance Ministry. Since we released the video on renouncing membership in sororities and fraternities and secret societies, we have received numerous emails with positive feedback from persons ready to repent and come out of Freemasonry, Order of the Eastern Star, and BGLOs. At Peacemakers, we have prayed with many people who the Holy Spirit has caused to remember that they had literally taken oaths and vows and knelt down on a pillow at an altar where their names of other gods and other goddesses were given reverence. What seemed like innocent, sisterly, and brotherly service had actually ignored the fact that this one simple act is considered rebellion to the one true God, Jehovah, Father of Jesus, or some call him Yeshua. After studying every word in these unholy rituals, some eyes began to open and realize members of these organizations had been given praise, giving praise and making forbidden covenants with spiritual entities other than Jehovah God. Any sisterhood, brotherhood or community service that came after making these unholy alliances and ungodly rituals was all fun. And I'm a witness. I had fun, too. But let's pause. What most of us fail to realize is that we literally had already given God's enemy, our enemy, legal ground to bring accusation against us in the courtroom of heaven. While I don't have time in this video to explain to you how the courts of heaven operate, I highly recommend you read Operating in the Courts of Heaven by Robert Henderson, as well as a book called Discerning of Spirits by DeMonte A. Edmonds. I can tell you that the Holy Spirit really guided these brothers as they teach and break down what the Word of God says concerning hidden spiritual things that bind us in certain areas of our lives. I read both these books many years after the Holy Spirit had already convicted me about false gods, but I thought I'd mention it as a point of reference for those of you who are having trouble connecting the dots about spiritual warfare. See, while those of you who are criticizing those of us who have renounced the secret oaths and vows, while stuck in your feelings as if you've been personally rejected, please hear me. I love you. And as a prophetic evangelist, this is a plea for your soul before the Lord returns. He is coming back soon for those who have lived a life of repentance and fully accepted him. If you have made a vow or an oath that called some other thing the light of the world or your source of wisdom, there's a chance he could say, I never knew you. And it's just not worth the risk. Why do I tell you these things? Certainly, no one, including me, wants to be persecuted with lies, slanders, and conjecture. Before renouncing, I had a Diamond Life membership in Delta Sigma Theta which means paid in full. But I tell you these things because I was called by God as an end time prophetic evangelist, as a catalyst for change. No one wants to be the catalyst for change when you're coming against over a century of man's traditions. But I do it because when I stand before the Lord on judgment day, Ezekiel 33 says, 
I will be held accountable if I did not give you the word I was given. I know it hurts. No one cried more than me when I was given this assignment. In the Bible, there was a prophet called Jeremiah, and they called him the weeping prophet because he had to give a very hard word, and he didn't want to, but he chose to obey. Now I know how Jeremiah felt. If you don't fully understand spiritual warfare, don't wait till judgment day to find out. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And death is not just physical. People can die spiritual deaths. And oftentimes, you don't even know you're spiritually dead. Why? Because of something called a reprobate mind. This term reprobate mind is worth writing down and looking up the definition in your free time. Also, go back and reread your entire ritual book. See what it is you agree to in the realm of the spirit, because these are the things that will eventually catch up to you when you least expect it. If you're in a covenant relationship with an organization that rejects certain people because of their looks, their grade point average, or because they didn't learn enough information about you or your organization. And if you believe in the laws of reaping, of reaping and sowing, do you think there's a chance that your father in heaven might reject you? Then there are those who worked really, really hard to bring in new members. You've even written reference letters for them. I ask you, how many people do you recruit for the kingdom of God off the street? When you go back and read your organization's rituals, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you if there is anything that is offensive to him. When he answers, the most important thing you can do is to repent and break agreement with the words you said. Words are powerful. By the way, since we're on the topic of rituals, why is everything so secret? That's cause for alarm. If you're a person of discernment, that ought to be your first red flag right there. Why can't we read the rituals before we go through the initiation process? Why can't we read the rituals before we make a decision about what we're pledging our hearts to? I'm telling you, there's a hoodwink in that. Most of the time, we're so exhausted by the time we get to the initiation ceremony, we don't know what we're agreeing to. So for those of you who have already reached that point where you felt a little uncomfortable, you felt some spiritual separation or even the Holy Spirit has already been showing you and prodding you concerning ways that you may have compromised. Remember in Matthew 7, where it says, many will say, Lord, Lord, but they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Who are these people he's talking about who won't enter? Who is he going to say, I never knew you to? They clearly were people who thought they knew him. But it was the hidden things that kept them from having an uncompromised relationship with him. And let me say this, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just judging the Greek letter organization's ritual books that have pledges kneeling down in front of an altar that has other gods on it. The word clearly says God will bring judgment on us for doing this. If, big word if, we don't repent and renounce. We're not renouncing people. We're renouncing the oaths, the vows, and the ungodly rituals. That's the end of my recap from video one before we talk about hazing. But hang with me because we're also going to do a repentance and renunciation prayer at the end of this video. I've had some YouTube subscribers writing me wondering where in the world is that video about hazing that you said you were going to do. So apparently many of you are thinking about pledging in this season. Some of you have already started filling out your paperwork. Some of you may already be online pledging. That's okay. It's never too late to repent. 
As long as you have breath in your lungs, it's never too late. Now about hazing. Something that occurs during the initiation process of many secret organizations, not all, but many, it's called hazing. What is hazing? Hazing is the practice of rituals, challenges, and other activities involving harassment, abuse, or hum humiliation that could be used as some way of initiation, initiating a person into a group. Hazing is not limited to fraternities and sororities, but is often found in gangs, sports teams, schools, and military units. Hazing can range from harmless pranks to rising levels of abuse that is considered criminal. It is prohibited by law and by colleges and universities because it includes either physical or psychological abuse. It may even include nudity or sexual assault. Keep in mind, although it is illegal, it is still very popular and prevalent during what they call an underground or hidden process. In my experience, Big Sisters had pledgy signed what they call a Pyramid Bill of Rights, stating that hazing was illegal according to National Headquarters policy. But interestingly enough, as soon as we pledgy signed it, they laughed and went straight into a set. By the way, set is the name of a demonic god that is worshiped in other countries and his name literally means chaos. Believe me when I tell you, our sets were total chaos and painful too. I will spare you the details, but I will tell you these hazing sessions lasted anywhere from six to eight hours a night, seven days a week, during a time when most of our fellow students were sleeping. Some popular myths people use to condone hazing are as follows. Number one, it's a way to help you bond with your line sisters, your line brothers, or your sands. Number two, it's simply a rites of passage. Number three, it's a chapter tradition to earn respect from older chapter members. In fact, those who joined the same organization in other chapters where hazing was not condoned are often teased and called skaters, meaning you got into their organization without getting abused like they did. In reality, Hazing is a form of control, intimidation, and manipulation. There's nothing Christ-like about it. Hazing incidents can include, but don't always include, number one, hitting with wooden paddles and beating with other objects and pushing downstairs, which have led to hospitalizations and death. Number two, overindulgence with intoxicating drinks or liquids. Number three, eating disgusting foods like whole onions. Four, blindfolded walks to load, Lord knows where. There was one crazy incident that killed two pledges when they were taken to a beach while blindfolded and a wave overtook them. Number five, playing in toilet water and grabbing unidentified objects. Number six, daily verbal and mental, mental abuse. A pledge recently committed suicide when verbal abuse and intimidation triggered her PTSD. Number seven, memorizing the history of the organization and memorizing long personal greetings for big brothers and big sisters. Probably the most tolerable of them all, but the fact that it takes place at 3 a.m. is problematic. But seriously, how many people go this hard for God? How many people spend this much time memorizing the word of God and worshiping God? But you say you have no idols in your heart. Okay. Number eight, forced to do self-inflicted Painful body positions, such as the chair, planking, calisthenics, running, and walking miles in extreme temperatures. Number nine, at wee hours in the morning to, driving at wee hours in the morning to pick up items for chapter members. Number 10, financial abuse to purchase items for chapter members. And although hazing was officially banned in 1990 by the headquarters offices and most BGLOs, it's still going on behind closed doors. It mostly, it's mostly kept hidden until someone gets hurt, which is too late. In video one, I said a word that probably shocked your socks off. I said the word occult. In Latin, occult means hidden. No Christian wants to admit that they participated in occult-like practices, 
But when you have rituals that are hidden, when you have hazing that is hidden, when you have handshakes and passwords that are hidden, at some point, one must use the wisdom of God and say, something's not right here. Many people know about it and they just keep bad things hidden. These things that could possibly save someone's life, save someone's grade point average, save someone's money for having to retake failed classes because they slept through them all due to sleep deprivation. Save someone's job. Many have gotten fired while pledging because of sleep deprivation. Can I just say, when we pledged, we averaged about two hours of sleep per night for six weeks. This was my least favorite part about pledging, sleep deprivation. When I got offline, I slept for a week at my parents' house and they thought something was wrong with me. It was. But these are the things that they don't tell you before you pledge. They also didn't tell us that sleep deprivation would cause one of our cars to crash into a tree. My pledge sister's car crashed the day before we were supposed to cross the burning sands. What? Burning sands? That doesn't sound like Christ. Yep, the car crash happened during hell week. Hell week? That doesn't sound like Christ either. Who represents hell? Our car crash happened the day before we were scheduled to do the death march on the hill leading to Founders Library on Howard University's campus. That's right, I said the death march. After our accident, one of my pledge sisters was hospitalized for an entire month. We were blessed she didn't die. But do you know, even after the accident, we were told to lie when an investigation was held. That doesn't sound like Christian principles. Why do I tell you these things? Because I serve a God who is the truth. He came to bring life, not death. His name is Jesus. In Hebrew, it's Yeshua. And he is all you need. Before we pray, remember to like this video and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be notified about our next message from our nonprofit organization, Peacemakers Inner Healing, where our mission is to restore peace of mind to persons suffering from depression, anxiety, PTSD, and any type of toxic emotion. By the way, I do own the copyright to this song, Can't Thank You Enough, written by yours truly, G. Renee and sung by my friends Vanessa Hone, Cassie, and Billy Lord. Let us pray the following prayer. Pray with me if you agree you'd like to repent for taking oaths and vows and kneeling at altars that included other gods during your initiation ceremonies. Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I repent for my sins of omission when I didn't seek your face concerning my involvement with State the name of your organization. I renounce and break agreement with all oaths, vows, and covenants I made when I pledged. State the name of your organization. Forgive me for my own participation in hazing others and allowing myself to be abused. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to lift every word curse and every spiritual repercussion that has been held in place as a result of my involvement in ungodly altars. Truly, you are the light of the world. You are Alpha and Omega. I break every generational curse of secret societies off my bloodline. I break the stronghold of deception, secrecy, lies, control, manipulation, elitism, pride, Leviathan, Jezebel, Ahab, false light, false wisdom, premature death, suicide, people pleasing, false religion, rebellion, darkness, and idolatry off my bloodline, including my descendants in Jesus' name. I choose the restoration of obedience, humility, your wisdom, and adoption into your kingdom forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough, I can't thank you for all you've done, Lord, I can't thank you enough, I can't thank you enough.